Hi guys, Matt from Haltech here and today is an exciting day because today I'll be doing our very first video on the Haltech PD16 power distribution module. Sit down, buckle up and get a can of your favorite energy drink because today's video is all about power distribution. We're going to walk through a background of power distribution in general. Then we're gonna look at the different ways to manage power distribution in a vehicle. Then we're gonna take a look specifically at the new Haltech PD16. I'll break down all the important specifications and walk through how you go about wiring and setting up a PD16 in your Elite or Nexus powered vehicle. So let's get cracking. What is power distribution? Very broadly, power distribution is exactly as it sounds. It's the method we use to physically distribute 12 volt power throughout a vehicle. Now in years gone past, this task was typically performed through a series of mechanical switches, relays, and fuses. Something like the six channel relay box that comes on a Haltech premium wiring harness. Now inside the fuse and relay box, we'll have a 12 volt supply wire that comes in from the battery. And then we've got a low current trigger wire that typically come from either a mechanical switch or an ECU. And these trigger wires would tell the relays when to switch on. When they do, there's a little contactor inside the relay that flips over and mechanically makes a connection between the battery 12 volt input and the 12 volt supply wire that goes out to the fuse and then eventually out to the device that the relay is controlling. Typically that's a fan, a pump, headlights, injectors, or whatever. Now these fuse relay block arrangements have been around for about hundred years and they're fairly commonplace. They're cheap and they're widely available. What is this PD16 device then? Well, the PD16 is just like the mechanical fuse relay box, but it's smarter. Just like a fuse box, we have a main power input, and just like a fuse box, we have outputs that turn devices like fans and pumps on or off. But unlike your conventional fuse relay block, there's no mechanical contactors and there's no physical fuses to blow. With the PD16, all of the switching on and off is done with solid state drivers and fuse currents that are set digitally by the end user. So the PD16 in essence replaces all of your mechanical relays and fuses. Now this does a few things. Firstly, it can really simplify a vehicle's wiring. And secondly, it allows the user to do things like monitor current draw in real time. Uh, you can set programmable fuse limits and because those fuse limits are set digitally, they can also be Reset digitally, which means if a circuit goes over current for any reason, you can program the PD16 to reset the fuse after a certain time period, maybe a second or a minute or whatever. Uh, you can also set the number of times that a circuit will try and reset before it shuts down completely for good. And because all of this information now lives digitally in your vehicle wiring, you can set a DTC to be sent to your dash, for example, with an error message about exactly which circuit has shut down and why. And this is just the start of what you can do with a PD16. So let's take a look at what's in the box when you buy a PD16 from Haltech, and then we'll have a little play and I'll introduce you to how to set up PD16 functions using the Haltech NSP software and an Elite 2500 ECU. So what's in the box? As with all Haltech products, there is the obligatory quick start guide and wiring diagrams. You get the main 120 amp Surlock connector, a cool keychain, a USB stick and lanyard with the latest Haltech NSP software, and a USB programming cable, which for now, you're not gonna use because all the programming of your PD16 is actually done through the ECU. There's no need to connect directly to the PD16 for communications and setup. We're gonna talk more about this in a moment, but for now, just realize you'll probably be using this USB cable for a skipping rope. And of course, there is the PD16 unit itself. So let's take a closer look at that. You notice on the top, there's a big red connector. Well, that's where the main power from the battery comes into the unit via the 120 amp fully sealed Surlock connector. We've got a four pin Deutsch DTP connector on the front here too. This houses four 25 amp high or low side switching outputs. Each of these four pins is capable of either supplying or sinking up to 25 amp of current. Now, that 25 amp rating is the limit of the Deutsch DTP pin itself being used, not the limit of the driver internal to the PD16 unit, which means these pins can actually supply significantly more than 25 amps for short periods of time without an issue. 
So the 25 amp HCOs, as we call them, for high current output, can be pulse width modulated at speeds of up to one kilohertz or a thousand times a second, which makes them capable of doing speed control on things like thermofans or fuel pumps straight out of the box. There is also the 34 pin super seal connector. Now this connector houses 10 eight amp high side outputs. These outputs can supply, as the name suggests, up to eight amps of continuous current on each output. There's also two eight amp high low push pull H bridge outputs that can be used for DC motor control, for things like Varex variable exhaust flaps and that sort of things, but they don't have to be used as H bridge outputs. They can of course just be used to power supply anything you like. Now again, the current limitation here is set by the pin itself and not the driver inside the PD16. So you can have confidence that burst currents of over eight amps for short periods will be okay. Now the PD16 is not just an output box. There's also eight programmable inputs on the 34 pin connector and all eight are able to be used as analog voltage inputs for pressure and temperature sensors and those sorts of things. With four of these inputs also being capable of accepting high speed switched inputs for things like wheel speed sensors and frequency based flex fuel sensors. There is of course also a five volt sensor supply and a signal ground for powering up any sensors and grounding those sensors that will be wired into the PD16. And for those who are about to ask, because the PD16 is directly integrated with the ECU software, any sensors or inputs wired into the PD16 are automatically and directly available for ECU functions as well. And for that matter, so are the outputs. So if you wanted to say, do um, a boost trim based on whether your headlights are on and off and they're being controlled through the PD16, then that's totally possible. On the top of the box, you have your status indicator lights for each output channel. If the LED isn't lighting up, a channel's off. If it's green, the channel's on and it's operating correctly. And if the LED is showing as red, then the channel is in a fault state, normally caused by an overcurrent. So that's an overview of the hardware components that come in the box when you purchase the PD16. There are some optional accessories available as well. Things like tube mount kits, and of course there is a full five meter flying lead harness to simplify those big wiring jobs. But I'm sure you guys are all really just chomping at the bit to open up the PD16 software and get a taste of all the things that you can and cannot do with the Haltech PD16. But here's the catch. There is no such thing as Haltech PD16 software. See, as I mentioned earlier, the included USB cable is only for updating the firmware in the unit and not for actually programming the PD16. So, how on earth do I get this wonderful box of magic switches to do its thing? That's where you need one of these, either a Haltech Elite Series ECU or a Haltech Nexus Series ECU. And the reason you need one of these ECU comes down to the way in which you set up and program the PD16. Now, if this is not your first rodeo with a PDM, then you would know that setting up and programming all of your outputs and channel functions can be quite a labor intensive task. With the Haltech PD16, however, once the power wiring is complete, you simply plug the PD16 into the ECU CAN bus and it's automatically recognized on the bus. And at this point in time, your PD16 is actually online and ready to program directly through the ECU's NSP software package. There's no need for a separate programming software for the PDM. There's no need to create matching CAM parameter files to allow the ECU to talk to the PD16. You just plug it in and it works, like magic. So once the PD16 is plugged into the ECU CAN network, it's as if the PD16 was always meant to be there. If you wanna set up, say, a headlight function, you simply go into the functions page, select headlights, assign the outputs to one of the available eight amp or 25 amp outputs, whichever you choose. And in this case, I'm actually going to use the CAN keypad to turn these headlights on and off. So I'll set that up as well. So we can go through now and add indicators left and right. Um, and given that we've got the indicators wired up, we may as well put the hazard lights in there as well. Now, if you're wondering why I'm skipping through this keypad setup so quickly, it's because we actually have a complete video walkthrough on how to set up a keypad for your Elite Series ECU already here on YouTube. Just look for the dude in the incredibly yellow, yellow hoodie. So this is all pretty cool and coming along nicely, but check this out. And this is, in my opinion, one of the coolest things about using a PDM. When I turn on the headlights, I can see how much current the lights are drawing. Now, this isn't really all that exciting when it comes to headlight activity, but it could be really useful 
to log the amount of current being drawn by your ignition coils or your fuel pump, especially when you're trying to chase down those hard to find issues that only occur under very specific circumstances. Being able to data log and see exactly how much current is being drawn by each circuit can be really useful. Now speaking of fuel pump, that's going to be a common thing to be controlled by a PD16. So let's set one of those up. Again, in NSP, we simply go to the Enable Disable Function page and we find Fuel Pump. Let's set up the primary fuel pump. If we drop down the primary pump mode, we have the option to set up the fuel pump as a digital output switched or digital output duty cycle. Now, if we select switch, the power of the pump is either on or it's off. But if we select duty cycle, then it'll send a pulse width modulated signal down to the pump, which effectively allows you to speed up or slow down the pump based on a map. Now, a word of warning here. Not all fuel pumps can be driven as a variable speed pump. So make sure to find out from the fuel pump manufacturer whether this style of pump control is okay for you. Now, one quick note here is you can see here in the options for fuel pump control, you can set the output type to digital switched CAN or duty cycle CAN. Now these CAN controls are not going to be used with the PD16. All the PD16 functions integrate directly with the ECU. CAN control fuel pumps are for specific vehicle applications where the OEM fuel pump is controlled via a CAN message on the OEM CAN bus. That's not what we're doing here, so I just thought I'd let you know that. We assign the fuel pump output to the PD16 pins by simply hitting the edit connection button on the fuel pump output relay function. Scrolling down to one of the 25 amp outputs and selecting the one that we want to use, our pump is ready to go. For all of the 25 amp outputs on the PD16, we can specify the fuse current, the soft start current, which is actually really useful for high current loads that often drag down the electrical system when they start. I'm thinking of things like thermofans. Now you've probably all experienced that dip in idle speed as a fan kicks in. This can be avoided by introducing a soft start up on the fan and slowly bringing it up to speed. We can also set up the behavior of the output if and when it does go over current or in the old speak, when it blows a fuse. So do we retry the output once, twice, 25 times? And what's the delay between tries? Is it one seconds, five seconds, 30 seconds, a minute? What you put in here will really depend on what you're trying to achieve. Whatever it is, you've got the option to do it. Now the final setting in here is the safe state. Now this is the state that the PD16 output will go to if the unit loses communications with the ECU for any reason. Now for some outputs, like say a thermofan, it makes sense for the safe state to be active. And for other outputs, like say a nitrosolenoid, the safe state is definitely better to be inactive. Now this might be pointing out the bleeding the obvious at this point, but it's worth reiterating. Because the PD16 is so integrated into the NSP ECU software architecture, the PD16 is only compatible with Haltech Elite and Nexus series ECUs. If you're not running one of these ECUs, then the PD16 will not integrate directly with your system and it won't run as a standalone device without an ECU to be its master programmer. There are plans to allow additional functionality to these units in the future and possibly to integrate into different manufacturers' ecosystems. But these are all future developments. Don't worry, when these additional functions are added, you'll get to see my ugly mug again as I explain to you how to use all of those additional features as well. That's really all we have time for today. If you want to know more about the PD16, why don't you head over to our website, howtotech.com, and download the latest version of NSP software. This will allow you to set up a full ECU and PD16 map. It'll allow you to assign the outputs, the functions, and to get a really good feel for how simple and effective full engine control and power distribution can be. Well, I'm Matt from Haltech, and I'll see you next time.